brings you out here in front of the Supreme Court. So I'm actually, I'm on a, a little bit of a road trip. Uh, I left home, which is Austin, Texas. I left there uh, on uh, June 20th, and I've been, been on kind of a tour. My first stop was Detroit. Actually, that was the first planned stop. I ended up stopping in Chicago for a little bit, but Chicago, Detroit for a couple days, and then um, I came here, and I've, I've been spending time out at the Supreme Court for about five days now. Oh, really? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. And you're out here uh, advocating uh, circumcision harms your whole baby. Uh, which I think is a great part for message. But you got an interesting audience, audience out here. The nominee is going to be selected soon. Um, I think it's a good spot for you to do this as well. And I think it's uh, kind of courageous for you actually to come out here and uh, talk about or put more awareness of an issue that a lot of people kind of ignore, don't you think? Yeah, um, definitely. There needs to be a lot more awareness on this issue. And uh, there's a couple of barriers to that. So right now, this is one of the most effective ways to do it, to get the message out there. Right. I mean, um, your whole baby is also doing a lot of good work with uh, buying billboard billboard space. So they've been uh, really successful. Actually, that was one of the main uh, original reasons for my road trip was to try to tour around and see all the different billboards. And uh, so yeah, there was one in Detroit for there was, that one was up for about three months. And and um, Detroit, uh, for for your viewers who don't know, that's where the the woman has been arrested. Uh, for female genital mutilation and she's likely to be convicted in uh, during her trial in January mm -hmm. so and that's a federal trial that's a federal trial it is gonna probably end up here right because she has some pretty high-powered lawyers and um, like Alan Dershowitz is on her defense team and they are gonna make the first um, the, you know they're gonna make the free speech the uh, freedom of religion argument so right. it's more than likely gonna end up here yeah, well, like interesting. Right yeah, national stage for that attention. There was a woman, I think, in California, who's uh, uh, who agreed with the father at the time. Hey, let's have uh, mutilate the genitals of the baby, right? Genital mutilation, right? Circumcision. But like, she changed her mind, and it took like six years for that to finally go to, to court. The kid is like six years old now, and the court, and somewhere I think in California, uh, ruled like, yeah, you know, we'll rule in the favor of the father. The kid has to get uh, circumcised. Um, you know, there's laws here in this country against mutilating the genitals of baby girls, right? I mean, they talk about male privilege. <laughs> um, they, there's female privilege right there, but there's none afforded to the protection of uh, babies being mutilated. Uh, could you talk about some of the effects that from circumcision or from genital mutilation of boys? Yeah, the, um, the foreskin itself is uh, full of nerve endings and blood vessels, and it, it plays important roles. So just, just the fact that uh, a, a circumcised person no longer has that body part, you know, in and of itself, that is a harm. So without even getting into the risks of the, the procedure itself, you're already talking about something that is not trivial at all, which is one of the, that's one of the main ways that um, circumcision proponents try to spin it is, you know, they try to say, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just a flap of extra skin. But um, there's very little awareness of, of what the procedure actually entails so there's just a lot of uh, ignorance and so we need to try to raise awareness and, and change that yeah they say like what 15 uh, square inch of like erogenous zones kind of being cut off you know that uh, makes it difficult sometimes there's like a positive correlation of like uh, being difficult like maintain erection you know satisfying their partners um, and so when you find that kind of a uh, negative harm uh, you find that you know people believe that uh, like, you know, it's because you don't wash yourself, it keeps, it prevents kind of like uh, STD and some kind of like bad germs, so, so to speak. But uh, they find that none of that is true. You know, there's no, uh, you know, medical association, um, professional group out there in the world that advocates for it. You know, it's kind of majorly, overwhelmingly here in the United States that advocates for it. I think it's like 60% of all male kids here in the U.S. are uh, have their children mutilated at birth. Yeah, right. the, the rates are going down, thankfully. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen that, yeah. Um, what do you think when they say that, uh, you know, well, the child just won't remember it, you know, that's, that's their excuse. It, it, that's, it's just, that's what it is, it's an excuse, and it's not a very good one, because at the end of the day, you're, you're taking away part of his body. Whether or not he remembers the surgery itself is, I mean, it's almost irrelevant, you know, it's right. like he's going to, for the rest of his life, he's going to be missing a part of his body that was amputated while it was still healthy for you know, 
nebulous reasons that nobody seems to to be able to pin down you know you, you talk to, to proponents of it and they'll start out arguing one thing and by the end there's they're arguing a completely different point that had nothing like they'll start out they might start out saying it's it they prefer it cosmetically which right. is which is just a, an appalling answer when you're talking about the genitals of children but they'll start off with that and then as soon as they get tested and they realize they're they're starting to get trapped then they'll they'll switch the medical arguments you know and it's the same with with the religious people they'll they'll start out saying they have a, a religious right to do that but once that argument starts to break down the, then they switch back to the medical so it's like the medical arguments are are the foundation that they that they use to to like shield themselves right We'll pick that up. Yeah, the only thing I was worried about was the, the wire was still connected. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's interesting that it's good to say, well, it's okay to mutilate someone's body as long as they don't remember it, right? You could take that argument and kind of apply it to other areas, right? Hey, it's fine to do this to her or him as long as they don't remember it, and that argument kind of goes to a moot point, right? It's, just a, it's a ridiculous... It's a ridiculous argument, argument right? Yeah. And what a way to show that you should respect the bodily integrity of other people, right? Respect their bodies uh, yeah, by, by disrespecting a, a child's body, right? By mutilating them, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, the first instance of learning in this world and the culture is like, yeah, we have to respect, uh, you know, other people's property rights, body ownership. But, you know, behold, <laughs> when they just came out of the wound, when they come out as a perfect baby, they say, yeah, you know, it's not looking all right. Let me cut up part of his penis, right? Uh, disrespects the whole entire idea of body ownership. Mm -hmm. um, I think you're doing fantastic, great job out here uh, promoting this. Uh, and you said, you know, do you know um, uh, Brother K? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm going to be meeting up with him in a couple of weeks uh, in Delaware. Great. Because <laughs> they're, they're going to be starting their Eastern Seaboard tour, and yeah, that my initially my road trip was just going to be you know checking out those billboards and then going home, and then I found out that uh, Brother K and his and his group are going to be starting their little Eastern Seaboard tour on the 20th of July and going until August 10th. I figured I had you know I was already going to be the area. How could I how could I turn that down? So. Right, right. What, what, so what brought you to this movement then? What what urged you to to talk about this? Yeah, so about three years ago I was. Uh, just kind of scrolling through Facebook and I saw a meme that was kind of sarcastic a Richard Dawkins meme and he was just he was just talking about how it doesn't make sense that if you know even what even what relig religious people say that that God created everything perfect but then he made a mistake and we have to try to fix it it's like it, it doesn't make sense so that, that's what the meme was about and I responded Honestly, at the time, I didn't think it was that big of a deal because I hadn't done research yet, and I was I was like kind of joking. I was like, I resent being circumcised. I did not authorize that. Like I was kind of joking around, but there were some people who responded like, "Oh, we're so sorry. Um, if you need someone to talk to, have you looked into restoration? All this stuff." And I I still thought it was kind of funny. I was like, you know, um, but I started looking into it, and it was like the more I find out found out about it, the more I was like wait what you know you know there's nerve endings what right it it uh it's supposed to protect what it's supposed to slide back and forth what and even nowadays like uh, getting into kind of adult territory but like if you go to you know any one of the, the free porn like Pornhub or something you can see for yourself that uh, an intact penis functions differently and <laughs> yeah. and many people would say better you know it, it has all the moving parts it's supposed to and so it's like right there in plain sight in front of your eyes you're like wait a minute that's not working the way you know mine does you know it's like right. it people can can say whatever they want about it but at the end of the day it is what it is and what it is is that you're cutting off healthy parts of a person's body right you know at the end of the day that's what it is and it's I believe uh, I remember reading something about some kind of his history in terms of like the promotion of it occurring here was by some uh, religious person advocating like uh, cease to masturbation, right? Yeah, you know. Uh, so like John Harvey Kellogg uh, was was part of the Seventh Day Adventists, and they had a um, they had a, a place up in Michigan, and uh, it was actually his brother who was the the, the serial mastermind. Um, and then John Harvey Kellogg tried to like steal it from his brother and say that since he was Anyway, it's kind of a long story, but these guys um, This was before the germ theory and they honestly believed that uh, nervous excitation was a cause of, of disease 
Mm-hmm. So, so for them, uh, I guess it seemed like a rational uh, response that if they can't be stimulated, then they won't get diseases. I don't know. Honestly, yeah. it, it doesn't make sense, but that's what they thought, and they promoted circumcision for that reason to make it harder to masturbate. Yeah, it's like, like they it. they were they were not ashamed at all about that. But now. Now you ask people, and they say, they'll tell you the exact opposite. They'll say, "Oh no, it doesn't affect sensitivity at all, or you know, it doesn't affect that at all." Even though, you know, a hundred years ago, people were saying the exact opposite, and they were using that as a re- as a as a justification, as an excuse, as a reason to do it. Right. So it's just like it's just so much ignorance. A lot of them believe that uh, sometimes, like when I advocate against their stuff, they feel like I'm attacking them, right? I'm not attacking them or I'm not judging them, uh, those who have had it done, right? Uh, this is uh, for, the, for the unborn, right? For those who are just being born, right? You know, you have an opportunity to, uh, to say no to that, to kind of stop that kind of practice. Um, it's, it's barbaric in its very nature, right? You, you wonder why, you know, your boy is crying in those late night hours, you know, every time he urinates in his diaper is, uh, is affecting that, uh, that wound <laughs> that still needs to heal, right? After you strap it down and take it to the knife. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, if it's um, that kind of barbaric, I think it's uh, way past his time kind of end but you know a lot of people don't really think much of the children they think about the children they're separate about the parents but what about the separation of like it's penis if it's a boy right Mm -hmm. so I think it's great that you're coming out here and you're doing this and I apologize for that and uh, continue uh, the good work let me know uh, when brother K comes to Richmond (laughs) thanks so much man thank you